The fundamental theorem of calculus is what relates slopes and areas of functions and provides the grounding for determining exact areas under curves. Suppose we have some function f of x and we are calculating the area under the function between a and b. Like done before, we could just consider rectangles. A purple rectangle from x up to the function and a blue rectangle from the point x plus h up to the function. It can be seen that each rectangle will underestimate or overestimate the actual area under the curve. So it's fair to say that the actual area is stuck between the area of these two rectangles, right? We can rearrange this inequality expression by dividing by h, giving us a neat expression for the actual area, which reads as, the area under a function is changing at a rate equivalent to the value of the function itself. We can see that as the limit of h approaches zero, that is, the width of the rectangles approaches zero, it will provide an infinitely thin slip of area. And that leads to the conclusion that the area is changing at a rate equivalent to the value of the function. If we take the antiderivative of each side of this expression, we obtain an expression for the area, not how the area is changing. Furthering this, suppose capital F of x is the antiderivative of f of x we see on the screen. It would be fair to say that the area is the antiderivative of the function from what we saw before. If we consider the area under the curve at the point x equals a, there is no area under the curve. Rearranging the expression we get c is equal to capital F of a. Substituting this into our prior expression for the area, we obtain an expression that reads the area under the curve is capital F of X minus capital F of A. If we consider the area from A to B and substitute B in as our upper bound, it can be seen that the area under the curve is the difference between capital F of B and capital F of A. This capital F of X function is obtained by evaluating the antiderivative of the function you are considering the area of. This is known as the fundamental theorem of calculus. And with an example, we're going to see exactly how areas and slopes are kind of inverses of each other. Consider the example of determining the exact area under f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 from x equals negative 1 up to any x point. Without considering any calculus, let's just add some areas together, since they'll just be triangles or trapeziums. When we consider x equals negative 1 to x equals 0, two identical triangles can be pulled out, one with a negative area since it's under the x-axis, and one with a positive area. Continuing up to x equals 1, we can pull out a trapezium that has an area of 2 units squared. And after this, the area will continue to grow at a relatively fast rate. Now, let's do some calculus. To obtain the exact area under a curve, we take the antiderivative of the function and substitute in the upper bound and subtract that result away from substituting in the lower bound. If we pick an upper bound of x and evaluate the result, we get a parabolic function, which, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, should tell us the exact area under the original function f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. When we graph the parabola, the y values are initially negative, as they should be. The y values on the parabola actually represent the exact area under the linear function for any x point from x equals negative 1. Here, let's watch it play out one more time. I want to shift perspective here for a moment just to really illustrate the point of how areas and slopes are so closely related. If we consider the parabolic function and we differentiate it, we obtain the linear function. What this tells us is that the y values on the linear function represent the slopes of the parabolic function. So if the y values on the linear function are negative, the result on the parabola will decrease. At the same time, if the y values on the linear function are negative, the area under the function will also be negative. So whatever the value of the area is, it should be decreasing. The same logic applies to positive y values on the linear function. 
positive y values is equal to positive areas. And if these y values are positive, then the slope on the parabola is increasing. And given this tells us the exact value of the area, the area will then be increasing. I know this is a lot to absorb, so I strongly recommend just to pause and ponder this for a moment. Overall, the fundamental theorem of calculus relates slopes and areas, and the formula of the fundamental theorem of calculus says to find the area under a function f of x from a to b, evaluate the antiderivative of the function, and take the difference of capital F of b and capital F of a.